Uh, hi, my name is Eve Warner and I am the Q at Wells Quad and this is my board sharing the load women and emotional labor. So what is emotional labor? Uh, emotional labor was originally coined by the sociologist Arlie Hochschild in 1983. It describes the need for workers to regulate their emotions to satisfy their customers and ultimately their employers. And recently, the concept of emotional labor is used to refer to unpaid, often unnoticed labor that goes into keeping everyone around you comfortable and living up to social expectation. So under this definition, emotional labor can occur in both personal and professional contexts. When emotional labor is unevenly shared among people it is in these realms, the results can be really detrimental. And historically, the burden of emotional labor has been inequitably placed on women. Examples of emotional labor in professional rela relationships might include things like expecting women to present ideas in a friendly manner and labeling them as aggressive when they are more direct, uh, labeling women as over-emotional for expressing constructive criticism or feedback in a professional manner, and unloading non-work-related problems onto women and expecting them to find a solution or make it better. In personal relationships, uh, examples of emotional labor can include relying solely on women to initiate important conversations like defining terms of a relationship, taking stock of how the relationship is going, and addressing conflicts. Uh, another example could be expecting women to take care of all household chores and childcare in addition to or in place of a job. And lastly, another example of emotional labor in personal relationships can include shaming women for friend zoning nice men by choosing not to enter into a relationship with them. So, how can emotional labor inequalities affect well being? Some impacts on physical well being can include hypertension, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of memory loss, and physical exhaustion. Impacts on mental well-being can include increased risk of psychological distress and symptoms of depression, job uh, relationship uh, dissatisfaction, depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, or burnout. And then how can we address inequities in emotional labor? If you might be someone who's taking on too much emotional labor, make sure that your emotional needs are known, set boundaries and practice saying no, Make time to practice for self-care. Remember, it is not your responsibility to change other people's habits and behaviors and seek professional help when necessary. If you might be taking on too little emotional labor, practice taking responsibility for your emotional behavior and actions. Ask women for permission before unloading personal problems. Pay attention to when women take on emotional labor and thank them for when they do. Don't shame or discredit women for being direct or showing negative emotion. If you're not sure whether you've been unfairly sharing emotional labor, just ask. And lastly, help to educate others on the concept of emotional labor. And then finally on my board, I would just like to pose the question to residents, how are you going to make emotional labor more equitable in your own life? Thanks so much for checking out my board with me. If you'd like to see more boards like this, you can either go to the Q's social media, which is on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or q.indiana.edu, or you can just visit your boards in your residence hall. Thanks.